G'day guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you had a really Merry Christmas. I had a great Christmas myself, and today, excuse the pun, but I'm putting a bow on Christmas 2020. I'm taking down the Christmas tree, I'm clearing out the leftovers, I'm getting rid of this wrapping paper that I still got lying around the toy room, and I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my Christmas haul for 2020. Now, I'm not gonna be showing you the beard trimmer which my dad got me that I obviously still haven't used. I'm not gonna be sharing with you the socks and underwear that my mum bought me. I really appreciate those items, but I also really appreciate your time. And because of that, I'm gonna show you guys some other Christmas pickups, some vintage pop culture items that if you're watching this, you should find far more interesting. Now, as far as Christmas in my household goes, gift giving tends to be a little bit limited. Unless you count my dog, I don't have kids yet, my family's pretty small, so gift giving in the Crusher household is quite limited. So what I'll usually do is, when I set up my Christmas tree, I'll wrap up some empty boxes that I've got lying around, I'll make my tree look a lot more festive. Um, this year, I did it slightly differently. Any pickups that arrived but, you know, during November and December, I kept them sealed, I wrapped them up, I set them around my tree, and as a result, not only did my tree look awesome, but I had some fun little items to unwrap on Christmas morning before I set off to spend the day with my family. Now that might seem a little strange, but at the end of the day, the average 36 year old doesn't collect vintage action figures. So I'm gonna keep doing me. Now the first pickups I'm gonna show you guys are something that we looked at in my last video, and that's Hasbro WWF wrestling figures. If you didn't catch that last video and you're into vintage WWF wrestling stuff, whether it's merchandise or toys, be sure to check that video out. But the first figure that I've got to show you guys is one that I've been trying to get my hands on for a little while now. I mentioned in that previous video that I am really working hard to complete wave one of that toy line. And the first one that we've got here is this series one 1990 Big Boss Man figure. Now the figure is in excellent condition. So, I mean, very little paint loss, very little um, rubbing or marks. It's com he's complete, he's obviously got his nightstick, his action feature works really nicely. I mean, this figure looks like it's straight off a card, which is, is just awesome. Now, obviously when this figure came out, this was when Big Boss Man was in a tag team called the Twin Towers with his tag team partner, Akeem. Akeem also being released in wave one of this toy line. But for me personally, I remember Big Boss Man far more so for his singles run a little bit later into the 90s. Um, and also, Big Boss Man is probably one of the higher profile wrestlers of, the, of my childhood in the WWF that I got to see live. I remember in about early 1993, my dad took me to a local wrestling event. I think it was called either Wrestling Down Under or Wrestle Right. And I got to see the Big Boss Man um, compete against Nails, who, if you're a fan of early 90s WWF, um, you'll also remember as quite a two dimensional kind of ex con character and gimmick, um, complete with orange jumpsuit that was more or less designed by the WWF to have a short run feuding with the Big Boss Man. Now, as far as the figure goes, um, I love the detail in this figure. I, I do find the sculpt a little strange, if I'm perfectly honest. Aside from the belly, the figure is very small in terms of scale, but as I mentioned in the previous WWF Hasbro video, which, which once again was my last video uploaded, these figures were never big on scale or, or, or sort of like accuracy as far as details go, um, or, you know, as far as the physical attributes of the wrestlers, but they're, they're cartoony and they're fun and they really capture the spirit of, you know, the, the wrestler, in this case, Big Boss Man, and I think this figure does just that. So really happy to have the 1990 Series 1 Big Boss Man in the collection. Now, the next figure that we've got here is this Series 5 1993 Jim the Anvil Neidhart figure. Now, coincidentally, Jim the Anvil Neidhart was one of the other relatively high profile wrestlers of the WWF during the period of my childhood that I also got to see live. Now, he wasn't performing on the same card as the Big Boss Man. This was, if I remember correctly, later in 1993, another event we went to. Um, and I believe, I mean, if I remember correctly, I think Jim the Anvil Neidhart wrestled against the Junkyard Dog um, that night. Now, JYD is obviously a little bit before my time, um, but I mean, it was it was one of my favorite. Those two shows, the shows with the Big Boss Man and Nails and the show with um, Jim Neidhart and Junkyard Dog, which I believe was headlined by Jake the Snake Roberts against Don Morocco. I mean, 
two of my favorite all-time childhood wrestling memories or just childhood memories in general so really happy to have Jim Neidhart again if I'm perfectly open about you know it, let me just say it like this if I had a hand as a kid in designing this figure we would have had that more iconic in for me at least heart foundation virgin version of Jim Neidhart um, but this was more accurate to 1993 when this figure was released from what I remember Jim Neidhart was competing with um, his I guess his brother-in-law Owen Hart in a tag team called New Foundation this is obviously or if I remember correctly, the new foundation version of Jim Neidhart. In any case, this figure might even be in better condition than the Big Boss Man figure. This figure looks straight off the card, um, which is just awesome. Now, as far as the, the features of the figure, I think, I think it's done pretty well. The, the face sculpt is incredible. That flat top haircut is captured perfectly. I love the sharp angular goatee. Um, so look, with the exception of the outfit, um, I, I love this figure, I think. I think it's absolutely awesome. So really happy to have Jim Neidhart in the collection. Next, we move on to some VHS pickups. Now, the first few that I'll show you are retail copies, meaning they're not X rentals. Generally speaking, as I'm starting to venture more and more into VHS collecting, if I have my choice, I tend to prefer X rentals because I love the extra nostalgia of the video store branding, and often they come in the larger covers, which I really like. Um, and also when I'm when I'm watching them because I, I buy these you know I buy retro video games and retro VH or vintage VHS to watch as much as to display I really like the previews that come before X rental copies but I have found that X rentals are far more expensive than retail copies and at the end of the day I, I'm not trying to spend 30 40 50 dollars on a VHS tape when I can buy retail copies as long as they have the, the iconic version of the film's poster on the cover and they're in the right sort of condition, when I can get retail copies for a couple of bucks a piece, you know, three for ten dollars, four for fifteen dollars, these types of things. So that that I'm leaning more towards picking up retail copies at the moment, but I do love X rentals, especially if I can find them at the right price. And the other thing when it comes to VHS is X rental copies are, uh, I mean, logic would suggest they're going to be more worn, and VHS they don't last forever. So next we'll get into the VHS. The first one is Cape Fear, one of my all-time favorite movies from the 90s. I highly recommend this if you haven't seen it already. We have obviously an 80s classic in E.T. I love the 80s pop culture references in this movie. Um, and it, you know it's obviously just a classic. What, what more needs to be said about E.T.? We then have National Lampoon's European Vacation. I love these vacation movies. Clark Griswold is, is one of my all-time favorite movie characters. So um, I've already got Vacation. I now obviously have European Vacation. The main one I'm on the hunt now for is Christmas Vacation. I was trying to get it in time for Christmas, but obviously we'll, we'll try and target that for next year. And obviously, if you can't see that, we've got the Clark Griswold Christmas T-shirt, which I love. I've been giving it a good run this, this, um, this month. And last but not least, for the retail VHS copies, we've got Home Alone. You know, speaking of Christmas Vacation, Christmas Vacation and Home Alone are probably my two all-time favorite Christmas movies. But just broadly speaking, I mean, you, I think Home Alone stands up at any time of year. Um, definitely has that rewatchability. So really happy to have Home Alone in the collection. And a nice little bonus with the Home Alone pickup was it came with this great little Fox video um, brochure and when I opened this up this was a complete surprise it's got some really cool favorites here you can probably see the advertisement for the secret of the ooze Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 um, so this was really awesome I was super happy to have this inside the VHS case as a nice little surprise next we have one last VHS it's a movie that I paid a little bit more for but it's an X rental copy of a movie that I really enjoyed as a kid and a movie that I sort of forgotten about forever I, I'd never see it listed but I saw a Facebook marketplace ad for no holds barred it brought all those memories back and I had to have it now it's obviously a timely one with the unfortunate passing just a maybe a few weeks ago of Tiny Lister who played Zeus the bad guy to Hulk Hogan's good guy Rip I clearly remember renting this from my local Civic Video Store where I grew up. You know, I, I used to drop by Civic Video every week. I'd, 
I'd rent WWF events on VHS. And I remember getting to the stage in about 1993 where I'd watched all the, all the WWF pay-per-view VHS tapes that they had. I was looking for something that I hadn't seen before that was wrestling related or WWF related. And I came across this and uh, took it home. I, part of me is a little bit surprised. It's, a, it's an M15 plus movie. Part of me was a little bit surprised that either my mum let me uh, rent it or, or the store let me rent it if I was there by myself. But um, I remember enjoying it, but, but definitely thinking this is a little bit darker than I'm used to from the WWF and from the Hulkster. Um, but that said, I did enjoy it and I can't wait to watch it for the first time in more than 25 years. And I'll probably put together a review video just to share my thoughts on, on that. One awesome little feature of this VHS is it's from Video Easy in Wembley in the UK. So I've got no idea how it made its journey to me in Sydney, Australia. Um, I can only imagine and uh, it'd be really interesting to know how many different hands this has gone through and how many different wrestling fans have watched this. So really happy to have no holds barred in the VHS collection. And to finish up, we've just got a few Super Nintendo items. The first one that I've got is a spare Super Nintendo controller. I've been looking for a second controller for some time. I'm finding that they're, they're going for a price that's higher than I'm comfortable with. Most of them were going for more than $50 Australian. So I was really happy to get this for about 30 bucks. Um, it's a little bit worn, it's a little bit chewed up, but that's okay. I've tested it, it works and at least now um, I've got that second controller for two player games. Next we've got a Super Nintendo game that I've been chasing down for a little while now and I'm talking about Royal Rumble, WWF Royal Rumble for Super Nintendo. Now I received this game with a Super Nintendo for, on Christmas Day in 1993 so it was, pretty, it was a pretty awesome moment to open this up on Christmas Day of 2020. Um, pop it in the, the Super Nintendo and give it a run and um, it just took me right back. So th this is definitely a fun game to play. Obviously, a big part of, of this is, is the nostalgia element. It's, it's um, you know, drawing upon those memories of childhood and enjoying those. But to me, you know, as a rest, as an 80s, 90s wrestling fan, this, this game definitely stacks up. Um, I've just played it very quickly. I've got a lot to, to refresh my memory about as far as the controls go and the functionality of the game goes, the gameplay goes, but, um, but really fun just to have a quick game and um, one that I'm, I'm really happy to have in the collection finally. And last but not least, we've got another Super Nintendo game and I'm talking about Rock and Roll Racing. Now this is a game that I never had as a kid, but one of my mates from school, you know, we're talking primary school, so probably 1993 or 1994. This is a 1992 game, so probably 1993. In Australia, we always we tend to get things a little bit later than the US. But uh, my mate Rob Hogan, he had this game, and I, I used to go over to his place at any opportunity I'd get, and we just used to play the shit out of this game and, and have a great time. There's, I've, again, I've had a quick go at this just to just to sort of see how it stacks up and refresh my memory. I'm looking forward to getting into it a bit more, but there's some really interesting elements of this game. Um, you know, you, you buy different cars, you, you modify cars from both the engine performance and also the, the weapons and artillery that the cars can carry. And it's a, it's a race to the finish line while you, you, you know, while you set traps and shoot out other cars. So there's some elements of this that are kind of like a little bit reminiscent of Mario Kart, a little bit, of um, sort of a, a predecessor to elements of Gran Turismo, which is cool, um, but all set on, in like a faraway galaxy, a sci-fi environment with an awesome rock and roll soundtrack. So this this game is really cool. Uh, you know, the quick the quick uh, play that I had, I really enjoyed it. And just like Royal Rumble, I'll, I'll probably you know once I have a chance to play it for a longer period of time. Put together a review video on this game so really happy to have rock and roll racing and royal rumble for super nintendo in the collection and that's it guys some really fun additions to my collection across vintage action figures vhs and gaming i'm happy with them i hope you enjoyed taking a look at them if you did smash that like button if you want to see more videos like this as always please hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments, what is your favorite Christmas present of all time? Whether it's from the 80s, whether it's from the 90s, or whether it was from Christmas 2020, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I wanna take the opportunity to wish you a very, very happy new year. 
I know a lot of us are really eager to put 2020 in the rear view mirror. I certainly am. And I hope that 2021 is a much better year for us all. And I look forward to bringing you more videos in the new year. Thanks again for watching. Bye bye.